Marcus Taylor Page, born September 11th, 1993. Today's feature is a highly requested player that seemed to have garnered a loyal fan base over the years with many of them asking about him and wondering what ever happened to the sweet shooting lefty that seemed like a definite lottery pick at times at UNC. He's broken records of UNC legends, led his Tar Heel team to the tournament every year he's been there, and to the championship game as a senior with the chance to win it all not for a buzzer beater that soured the ending of his career. He was drafted to the NBA, although be it in the second round, a far cry from his personal aspirations and expectations placed on him due to his play as an amateur. So what happened to Marcus Page? Why isn't this natural shooter, true point guard, and winner not on an NBA roster? Salute to A.G. Warfield 3 for this request and staying on me about this one, man. Let's get into it. It's your boy J.C. Stunner Growth. Let's get it, man. You better fucking like it, subscribe! <laughs> Marcus Page is from Cedar Rapids, Iowa and played his high school ball at Linmar High School, where he led his team to an undefeated season as a junior in 2011, and a state championship. He committed to play for UNC in the same season over schools like Kansas, Iowa, and Iowa State. As a senior, he was a McDonald's All-American after averaging 28 points a game. At this point in his career, he was rated the fourth best point guard in his class behind a few NBA players, Marcus Smart, Chris Dunn, and Yogi Ferrell. Stunt number one, staying too long. As a freshman coming into Carolina, Page was given the ball from day one to be the Tar Heels leading man. He started every game, led his heels to a 25 and 11 record, and averaged eight points and four assists. Immediately, you could see this guy's potential as he displayed very steady point guard play, excelling in pick and roll situations where he made great reads and with his smooth lefty stroke, especially off the dribble, he knocked down a good amount of his shots. At this point, he showed some signs of the player he could be over time, but wasn't seen as a future NBA player just yet. That's until his sophomore season, the season I think he should have left for the NBA. He opened the season in the fifth game with 32 points and a win against Louisville. Later, another big win against Kentucky, finishing with 23 points. He finished the season averaging a team high, career high, and good for fourth in the conference, 17.5 points a game. He shot 88% from the free throw line, good for best in the conference, 39% from three. 4.2 assists and led the team to the third round of the tournament where they lost to his hometown Iowa State. The reason I believe now would have been a good time to leave was because of how I believe the NBA views players and the perspective of people in general that if you want a skilled person to do a job, youth is always one of the top priorities. The older you get, the less they see the potential in you and pass that opportunity on to the next guy up. The way basketball moves, you have to strike when the opportunity is presented, no matter what you may feel about how your season ended team-wise or how much of a great experience you had at your program. Marcus strikes me as a guy that loves basketball and studies it to where he can probably recall everything that happened in his season without drawing a blank. A basketball buff and it's evident when you listen to him speak about the game. For this reason, I think he couldn't live with losing that early in the tournament, especially to a team from his hometown and one that he passed on in recruiting. He wanted to come back and finish his career right, and it's to be commended. The thing is, as far as your future is concerned, that ending to your college career doesn't matter one bit when it's all said and done. LeBron James never even went to college. Do you remember Kawhi Leonard's last college game? KD, Steph, when you put up averages like that, especially from three and the free throw line at a school like UNC, you have to leave. Another reason I think that was a great opportunity for him to go is because the 2014 draft had room for a point guard of his skill set to be drafted in the first round and sign a guaranteed contract. Marcus Smart, Dante Exum, Alfred Payton, Tyler Ennis, and Shabazz Napier all first round draft picks that year. Outside of Smart and Exum, who people were so high on for some reason, I never liked his game or demeanor, but that's another story. 
Outside of those guys, Paige would have definitely gotten drafted among that crop. After coming back to school, his averages dropped every year while he dealt with injury and his chances and opportunity he had all but faded away and costed him that first round guarantee, something he'd need down the line. Stunt number two, caught in the middle. Being a point guard, like I said, uh, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten that I'm a point guard over the past couple of years because of my Carolina experience. Um, but at the same time, I can show that I can run a team. Marcus Page, in the final two years at UNC, somewhere got caught in a weird mix of being a true point guard to a spot-up shooter slash off-the-ball undersized shooting guard. Because of injuries to his team, it was necessary to move him off the ball and take on a more shooting role and it further crashed his chances of being a first rounder. Now at 6'6", six six you're an undersized player that's out of your natural position and you don't excel for whatever reason in your new one. A lot of people argue that it's his body type, he's too skinny, he's not strong enough. In today's NBA, that's not the case. Steph Curry and he have very similar body structures and you could argue that he was bigger than a rookie Steph Curry. Well, he's too short. Chris Paul and many other guards are smaller. It's his style of play and him not gaining those final two years in his correct position. It made teams see him as a small two guard that can't really score, defend, or play make at the shooting guard position. He shouldn't have even been in that position anyway and should have left early, but putting him at the shooting guard upon his return to school was a disservice done by Roy Williams and another example that these coaches don't really care about your future, only their program success. As a junior, he averaged 14 points a game, 4.5 assists, and shot a career-high 40% from three, leading his team to the regional semifinal. Dealing with plantar fasciitis all season may be the reason for the drop in scoring production. Regardless, it left scouts and GMs wondering where they could possibly play Paige, seeing as though he isn't the quickest, fastest, highest leaper for his size, which will make him most importantly a liability on defense, and he isn't Steph Curry talented as a scorer, leaving him in a weird gray area that's hard to take a shot on. Stunt number three, falling in bad hands. After returning to school for his senior season, one where this time, team-wise, they had their biggest success, making it to the national title game where they lost on a buzzer beater and Paige having 21 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds, he entered the draft and was selected with the 55th pick in the second round by the Brooklyn Nets, who immediately traded him to the Utah Jazz. The Jazz having no need for the tweener with all the guards they had and a young Dante Exum who they still believed in, he was waived and didn't make the final roster. And here's where that guaranteed contract would have came in handy. He would then go to their D-League affiliate and had a mediocre season where again for some reason, the team played him primarily at the shooting guard position. He shot just 41% in the paint that year, and out of his 86 shots he took there, was blocked on 17 of them. And this is what I mean by falling in bad hands. Had he went first round, that team would have valued his future more and placed him in positions where he could be successful. Not playing the wing trying to finish off a pass, instead of creating initially and using his IQ and off the dribble shooting. Following the 16-17 season, he signed with the Hornets as a two-way player, spending most of his time in the D-League, averaging 15.2 points, 3 rebounds, and 4 assists. The Hornets, another team that didn't need his skill set, declined his qualifying offer and both parties parted ways. He's been overseas ever since, building a solid career. All in all, I think Paige made some crucial decisions early on that didn't work out in his favor not leaving school after his sophomore year, and junior year for that matter, and then him being on affiliate teams that didn't value what he brought to the table. Very nice player, but because he doesn't excel athletically, those bad choices and teams he played on that didn't use him right, his growth was stunning. Much respect to him, I wish him nothing but the best. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.